And good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Vineyard. We're going to tape this episode so that it will premiere at 11 o'clock Eastern Time this morning. And um, we're going to go ahead and take care of a few announcements while we're at it this morning. And... Um, It's going to be a two-lesson deal today. Uh, we're going to cover two lessons today. One of them is being neither hot nor cold. And the second lesson is Thanksgiving, because this is the week of Thanksgiving. And that means we have an announcement uh, about this week's schedule. First of all, if you'd like to bless the ministry, send your check or money order to James Barkus Ministries, Box 762, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. Um, don't bother with packages right now. Uh, we're kind of debating that right now. Um, take the holidays to think about some of this. Uh, this is the beginning of the crazy season, the silly season as Mel Gibson called it in Lethal Weapon. So hold off on link to the word, but if you still send it to us by U.S. Postal Service, it'll forward to our P.O. box. So it'll be held there. Um, um, Again, Box 762, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. Send your check or money order there. Prayer requests and testimonies. Since we're no longer part of Twitter, there's no character limit anymore. So prayer requests and testimonies. JBMPrayerAtLive.com if you'd like to book us for special events or revivals. JBMWorldHQ at Live.com. Our normal service times, which this week... We're pretty much going to do just the Sunday morning service this week and next week. This Sunday and next Sunday, just one service. And this is for Thanksgiving week. Uh, I know it says 10 a.m. I've put 11 a.m. on the other slideshow. But we're going to premiere it at approximately 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We're recording it now so that we can upload it in a little while. It's 9.02 a.m. But our normal service times are 10 a.m., 7 p.m., and 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. And we want to thank you. We want to thank you for joining us this morning. I'm James Barkas, evangelist and founder of James Barkas Ministries. Uh, yeah, you can see I made the bottom graphic darker blue. That's uh, pretty much a good thing. Um, I used an effect on it, uh, filter, so to speak. So, um, made it darker blue, and that's a good thing. Because uh, you're able to see the name and the uh, other better. And I appreciate you. Uh, being with me on this. We have a number of scriptures that we will go through today. <coughs> Regarding Thanksgiving for the second part and for the first part we're going to cover one of the letters about being neither hot nor cold. It's what is needed at this point in time. So give me just a moment. And in this case, we're in Revelation 3.15 uh, and 16. Um, Let me get the Bible back on screen here.
And basically, I'm going to read that letter in Revelation chapter 3. But the key verses are going to be 15 and 16. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, I'm sorry, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, thou, thou, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. We're going to go 14 all the way to 22. So, just a moment while I make an adjustment here. And we'll get right to the first part. And unto the angel of the church and the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with thyself, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame him and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. There are ministries that don't want to offend. There are ministries that don't want to proclaim the word exactly as it is written. So, having said that, you're either hot or you're cold. And if you're neither one, the Lord's going to spit you out. If you're neither one, the Lord's not going to put up with it. You're either in all the way for Him or out. My wife... Lisa compares it to straddling the fence. And my dear wife Lisa compares it to straddling the fence. Either you are for something or against something. It is it's not in you may have, have compassion. compassion. From my mother, who has lost her children, and yet there is a law poorly written 
that, that criminalizes, criminalizes miscarriages. miscarriages. That considers miscarriage or murder. Yes, yes, I, I believe. believe when that child was conceived, conceived in the doctrine of Almighty God, God that, that that young, young child has life, life can, can feel, feel pain. pain. I am not, not like others, others who say, say that heart rate that you're hearing is may make that guy for no analysis. I do, I do believe a child has a heart rate from, from the moment of the session. From the moment of creation. All of us children have had it in. We're all of us children. We live on this earth. We live, we live on this earth, earth, on this planet earth. earth. We live on it. And, and we are alive in his sight. Sight. Yes, What I don't, I don't believe is this criminalization of the terrorists because that But the Some, some children, children they are created, some have like happens. happens. Within the body, and the child is given life, is called home over the Lord. It, it is a sad thing. And, and to criminalize his marriage is wrong. In, in the sight of God Almighty. And definitely in the eyes of courts. And this is very traumatic again. For the mother, for the father, and for the family around Why add to that trauma? That, that is, is the question, question I asked ask myself, myself when this law was written, written and I got to read it. Why subject the mother, father to further criminal action in the most traumatic experience of the law? I'm not the spouse of a political point. point. You're not asking the question. Have you, you, if you work on the government, have you been Have you, have you, you know, know heart, heart? To, to know, know that this, this is a tragedy. tragedy. And, and that, that what's needed right now, now is this comforting, consoling arms around my parents. Give him an A comfort. Not hand in to rest. Not rest. Some of this is very feeble to say, say something, something was done, done wrong in the midst of the pregnancy. So, so the heartbeat law of Georgia, Georgia, and that's, that's just one example. There's other laws across this nation. Need to be revisited. Need to be amended. So that compassion for the parents having lost a child they so dearly wanted 
is, is not criminalized. And it is better in line with God's principles and God's, God's law. law. God's law is I would suggest that lawmakers have a copy of the Bible in their offices with them and to read it and to study it. And it don't matter what you turn the Bible, Bible needs, needs to return, to return to their relationship. Oh, no, no, no. But, but you either, either for life, life with, with compassion, passion, with, with heart, heart, and with understanding, understanding. You're either for God or you're for man. man. You can't be for God. Because you need to throw a loved one, one and despise, despise the other. other. Are you going to despise the other? When an organized religion made it about and I'm just going to be blunt about it, about it, about it, about it, for different principles and for different reasons. Just as I think I got it. I got it. At the end of the service, all the way, I had my stuff with me. And my now former pastor walked out there to the front porch of the church and said, What did he say? I said, the Lord said it's time for me to move on. For about 10 years, I just read my Bible, listened to music, prayed. When I got free, I had a clear understanding of the role I had to fulfill. I had to be hot or cold for the Lord. And I became hot for the Lord. It took me some time to figure out and during the pandemic, I had plenty of time because I started this ministry two years ago. Almost three years ago. After we moved down here to Manchester, Georgia, I... said, why don't we start our ministry? Even though we live across the street from the church. There's a, a church right across the street from my back door, not that far away from me. And in that direction, I've been offered an invitation to visit. I was going to make business cards, but I'm almost out of ink. That's part of the reason why I ask for support. When you support the ministry like mine, you, you help get ink so that business cards can be printed. Business card paper so that I can make business cards and hand to these churches. 
and network. Network with them. The Lord called me to do so. But I started this ministry to make the Word of God available to those who maybe felt as I did. That they didn't belong to a denomination or another. That maybe they just belong to God and to Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. That no denomination really fit their soul. And that's why I continue in this ministry. And Jesus said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither hot nor and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. If you're not hot or cold for the Lord, he'll spit you out. It's like a tea that's not quite warm, but not quite cold. It's like room temperature. It doesn't really taste that good. That's why I'd rather warm tea or iced tea. Same with Jesus Christ. Now, part two of this... Part two of this is going to be our Thanksgiving. As we go through this, as we go through our Thanksgiving, and this is the week of Thanksgiving, by the way, so once again, we'll give the announcement in this sermon, today, we're only having one service. Next Sunday, we're only having one service. Next Wednesday, not this Wednesday coming up, but the next one. I'll get my calendar out. Wednesday, November 30th, we will resume Wednesday night service. So we're having one service today on the 20th, one on the 27th, and then again on the 30th. On the 30th, we will resume normal schedule. We'll having, for the next two weeks, on Sunday, one service. We'll see how that works out. So back to the Bible at hand. putting the Thanksgiving a few of the Thanksgiving scriptures in here. I think for example this is going to work good. This should do it. 
So, in this week of Thanksgiving, we get together, we watch football games, we do all kinds of good things here and there. Of course, I'm going to be watching the Egg Bowl because I want Mississippi State. I want Mississippi State to beat all Miss. There. <laughs> there's that cowbell, and there's the beat all Miss sticker that I got when I was a student for one semester at Mississippi State. Yeah, let's beat all Miss this week. Here we go. I'm sure the Lord will enjoy that cowbell. I wish I could take it with me to heaven. The Lord will be like, what are you bringing that thing for? That is an eternal noisemaker. <laughs> and then there's Bully, the Mississippi State Bulldog. So on that note, moment of levity in the middle of the service, and we thank you for that. Um, but I want to start saying uh, Hebrews 12 and 28, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 and 28. I'll add that in there for good measure. And give me a moment because I'm fixing the list very quickly here. Hebrews 12, 28, King James Version. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. First Thessalonians 5 and 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore. This Thanksgiving, we are rejoicing for family. We're rejoicing for friends. We're rejoicing for those who have survived cancer. We're rejoicing for those who have survived another year of hard work and toil. And we are thanking the good Lord for another year of being with us. And I thank God for this ministry. So I'm rejoicing evermore. 517, pray without ceasing. When we give thanks, we pray without ceasing. There's times I catch myself working or whatever, and I'm just in constant communication with the Lord. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. Psalm of David, bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. You know what? I'm just going to go all the way through Psalm 103. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, Neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. 
keep just a moment on silence and the alarms right quick. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. That's him stretching his arms on that cross. Right here, middle cross, that's where Jesus Christ was. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass as the flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear Him, and His righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep His covenant, and to those that remember His commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared His throne in the heavens, and His kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye His angels, that excel in strength, and that do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye His hosts, ye ministers of His, that do His pleasure. Bless the Lord, all His works, in all places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. I'm glad we took time to read the whole psalm rather than just those few verses there. Colossians 2, 6, and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. This is what we do. Not just one day out of the year, but all days out of the year. Um, my wife and I sat down yesterday and we watched A Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim. Uh, if you haven't got that movie, it is a good movie. Very entertaining. It's the uh, um, cinema, 1951 cinematic telling of the Charles Dickens classic A Christmas Carol. Um, but its original title was Scrooge, but it was known as A Christmas Carol on the DVD cover. But we should not just thank the Lord one day out of the year. We should thank Him all the days out of the year. Finally, Isaiah 12, 4 and 5. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon His name, and declare His doings among the people. Make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord. He is worthy of all praise. So we sing to the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In everything. Praise the Lord. We come to this time. I give thanks unto the Lord for being able to tell people that yes, I made mistakes. Yes, I've I've done so in the past. I have no qualms about admitting my mistakes and what have you. It's a little bit dark in here, so I'm going to turn the light on for our studio. Got a little bit brighter in here. And thank you so much for bearing patience with me. Thank you for bearing with me and all good patience and whatnot that we have here. But in all the things that I've done in my past, yeah, 
I've had a screw up here and there. I've made mistakes. So, I come at this point in time, you know, admitting, yes, I am human. all of sin and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is calling out. But God commanded commendeth his love toward us in this in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that's right here if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures say, If whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, this is Thanksgiving week. I am thankful this week and every week and every day that we have a loving God who is holding His hand out right now. He's holding His hand out to you. He wants you to reach for that hand and grab it so He can pull you from that miry clay onto the solid rock foundation that He brings you to when you're saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit. He wants you saved. He wants you baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants you and loves you deeply. He does not want you to die in eternity. He wants you to live. And so... I come to you today, as I do every week, with Romans Road. And I give you that road because there's a decision you have to make. Today we learned two lessons. You're either hot or you're cold for the Lord. And number two, give thanks to the Lord. He's worthy of all praise. There was a woman who released a TikTok who said, I was convinced that I was nothing without him. So he would have to explain himself to me. The Lord explains everything in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, he explains everything. And that's my answer to that TikToker. You open the Bible, you read it word for word. He explains everything from the creation of man to what's expected at the end of time. From everlasting to everlasting, Jehovah and His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost have all explained it to you and that Spirit of Truth will explain it to you as well as you receive it. As you receive that spirit of truth, as you receive Jesus Christ in your life, everything will be made clear to you. Jesus said that himself, and he said that to his disciples. But Jehovah should not have to prove himself to anyone. Because, because he's, he's already done. 
from Genesis to Revelation and everywhere in between. So, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I call on the name of the Lord February 26, 1996. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. Because if I didn't, I sure wouldn't be here. I had an extra infection in the back of my neck. They took that out. I spent four days in the hospital because they had to pump me full of antibiotics. Because the infection had created sepsis. And another round of it down in the southern hemisphere in my body, pelvic region. I spent exactly eight hours out of the hospital and I had to go back in. Had I not gone back in, I would have likely died. They had to pump another round of antibiotics in. I couldn't take a leak. I couldn't do nothing. I had emergency surgery on the 29th of September 2022. I told them I had to go to work. I didn't go to work that day. I was in emergency surgery the day I was supposed to have been working for a new client. I spent an additional three weeks out do that. But I kept in touch. I did my best. I wasn't fully recovered. So I had to be a lot of things, and I was experiencing a lot of discomfort at that time, too. But I persevered. But now, I'm preaching and teaching the Word. I've got a new job coming up on the 28th, which is a Monday. A week from tomorrow, I start a new job. I'm glad for that. So I'm going to pray with you right now as we take this service and get it uploaded on the internet. I'm going to say a quick prayer and then We're going to give thanks and have our Thanksgiving vacation. Heavenly Father Jehovah, we come to you and say thank you. Father, there are those lost right now, and I'm praying for them right now, that they admit their sin, and that they admit they are lost. Father, I pray that I call upon the name of Jesus Christ to save them, to pull them out of that mire of clay and bring them to solid rock. Your hand is out there. Your hand is right here, ready to grab hold of their hand and pull them from the mire of clay onto that solid rock. Father, your Holy Spirit is ready to go in. The Spirit of truth. Father, I ask all these things on their behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, just say, Father in heaven, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm at right now, but I need your help. I need you to come get me out of this miry clay and put me on the solid rock that you would have me to be on. 
Father, I need Jesus right now to clean me up and to rebuild my soul so that I may worship Him. And I need the Spirit of truth in me. I believe and I receive in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. 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 I did a little backwards today. I pray that you received it and then I pray that prayer with you. If you pray that prayer, I want you to send your testimony to me. Tell me about it. JBM prayer at live.com prayer request and testimony put either one of those in the subject line JBM prayer at live.com uh, if you'd like if you're a preacher and you want to book us for a special event JBM world HQ at live.com send your check or money order to PL box 762 Manchester Georgia 31816. Address it to James Barkus Ministries and we'll put that in our square account. Um, because we'll have that. If you do want to send us Bibles, maybe you got some Bibles sitting in a box somewhere collecting dust, we can put it to good use. We can send it to people that need the Bible. Um, packages, UPS, FedEx, USPS, and hand delivery. 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. Our normal service times. Friends, our normal service times are Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Sunday night, 7 p.m., Wednesday night, 7 p.m. And that's our normal service times. We're going to stick to this schedule permanently or as long as I can do it. Well, thank you for joining us on the Vineyard this morning. Have a great day, everyone. May God richly bless you and keep you and guide you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We'll see you next Sunday morning.